life on a hard quiz. Jim, apprentice plumber, expert subject, skateboarding. Amanda, teacher's aide, expert subject, Dr. Maria Montessori. Nicole, conference organizer, expert subject, Duran Duran. Martin, digital advertiser, expert subject, Stanley Kubrick. Here's your host, Tom Lisa. G'day, Martin. Hey, Tom. Now, your expert subject is Stanley Kubrick. Mm -hmm. What's your favourite film of his? Ooh, it's probably 2001 A Space Odyssey. OK. Are you the only person in the world that understands it? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't fully understand it, but that's, that's what's the, best, the beauty of it, you know. You just love seeing things that you don't understand? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to love parts of this show. <laughs> what's your favourite part of 2001 A Space Odyssey? Uh, it's probably the... The scene where Hal takes over the spaceship. Do you think Hal could take over your personality tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, but I hope not. Yeah, I suspect he never will too. <laughs> okay. <Good> to know. <laughs> okay, no. Last set in the expert round, it's Martin and Stanley Kubrick. Before becoming a film director, Kubrick worked for a magazine called Look, where he was the youngest person to hold what job? Martin. Is a photographer? Correct. Yeah, he was 17. He quit after four years in order to make his first film. Uh, there he is there, looking scarier than any scene in his film. <laughs> in the ultra-violent A Clockwork Orange, Malcolm McDowell plays the leader of an English gang called the Droogs, whose costume is based on the white clothing worn in which sport? For the Steelers, Nicole. Cricket? Correct. Double points to you. Yeah, Malcolm McDowell had his cricket gear in his car and he tried it on for Kubrick and then Kubrick requested that he wear his box on the outside of his trousers. <laughs> uh, which is what Shane Warne does in his spare time. <laughs> Despite a reputation as one of the greatest directors of all time, Kubrick only ever won one Oscar for Best Special Visual Effects in which film? For the steal, it's Jim! Eyes wide shut. Incorrect. <laughs> Martin! 2001 Space Odyssey. Correct! <laughs> We talked about it so much, I thought you were just going to grab it, but then I forgot you're off your head because you're a skateboarder. <laughs> <laughs> in The Shining, a crazed Jack Nicholson breaks a door open with an axe and says the iconic line, here's Johnny, imitating the nightly introduction of which talk show host, Martin? Uh, Johnny Carson. Correct. <laughs> it seemed to three days to film and Nicholson had to chop down 60 doors. <laughs> he ended up winning the block. <laughs> <laughs> Last question in your set, Martin. A renowned perfectionist, Kubrick holds the Guinness World Record for the longest constant movie shoot with which film starring a then-married celebrity couple? Jim for the steal! Eyes wide shut. Oh, you little beauty! Double points to you. You redeemed yourself! All right, at the end of the expert round, you're still at the bottom, though, on 15, Jim. <laughs> Incorrect. Martin. The correct answer is hats and mitts garland, which means, you know, get over here. <laughs> what happened, bro? I didn't answer enough questions correctly. Yeah. <laughs> You're very literal, unlike Kubrick. <laughs> All right, well, maybe like Kubrick, in 10 years' time, we'll understand just what happened with you. <laughs> Student, expert subject, roller coasters. Paul, finance manager, expert subject, Manchester United. Eliza, student, expert subject, The Shining. Carly, hotel receptionist, expert subject, Watergate. Eliza, hey. now you're into the movie The Shining. Yeah. How did that start? Uh, from the Simpsons episode parody. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'd always been into, like, spooky stuff yeah. when I was a kid and, like, combination of Simpsons, scary, and, like, not knowing what the plot was and stuff just made me really curious. Now, you're into The Shining. Now, when I boot you out, you're not going to come back and put an axe through that door, are you? <laughs> I don't know. It looks pretty solid. I don't know if I could. Like, I don't know up, much upper body strength. Like, yeah. I'll try it, I guess. And if you're covered in blood, we won't be able to tell because you're dressed. <laughs> <laughs> 
next set of questions is for Eliza on The Shining. The Stanley Hotel inspired The Shining when author Stephen King had a nightmare there about a fire hose chasing which member of his family? His Eliza. son. Correct. <laughs> In the film, struggling writer Jack Torrance becomes caretaker of the Overlook Hotel, which he is told is built on a site formerly used as what? <laughs> Eliza. A Native American burial ground. Correct. No horror film in the 70s would be complete without bad city planning. <laughs> Possessed by supernatural forces, Jack abandons the writing of his play and repetitively types, all work and no play makes Jack a what? For the skill, it's Adam. Dull boy. Correct. Ooh. The ability of Jack's son, Danny, to communicate telepathically and see visions of the past is called The Shining. The term inspired by which John Lennon song? Eliza. Instant Karma. Correct. Instant Karma. We all shine on. Last question in your set, Eliza. Jack hacks through a bathroom door shouting a demented, here's Johnny, just after reciting lines from which fable? Eliza. The Three Little Pigs. Correct. Two left. Who's going to be the hard quiz champion? Edim and Eliza, get over here because it's time to play hard quiz. Final round. Head to head. The Shining versus Roller Coasters. Hard quiz. Now, there can only be one hard quiz champion who gets to take home the limited edition big brass mug. Eliza, what will you do with the mug if you win? I reckon I'll just, like, dump a whole thing of Milo and then, like, a litre of milk in. Just... That'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> do you reckon you'll get through it? I don't care. I'll, try, I'll force myself to. I've earned it. If I win, I'll, I'll do it. OK. What about you, Adam? Big tea lover, so I'm going to use it for its original purpose. <laughs> What's happened to kids these days? <laughs> <laughs> We're just the lamest kids possible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Milo and tea. <laughs> what are you going to do at your 21st? Have a bicky. <laughs> It's best of five penalty shootout style, harder questions on your expert subject. So it's Edam's knowledge of roller coasters versus Eliza's knowledge of The Shining. Let's play. Hard! <laughs> this could be the youngest final round we've ever had. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. We're going to lose viewers over this. <laughs> Baby boomers across Australia are just packing up shop. They're like, <laughs> Eliza. Shots of Danny riding his tricycle around the halls of the hotel were taken by Steadicam operator Garrett Brown, inventor of the technology which originally had what name? Ooh, I don't remember. I know what year it was made and the movies it was used in before The Shining. What other movies was it used in? It was used in Rocky before that. I'm going to have to guess. I don't know. It was called... Move cam. Incorrect. It was not move cam. Okay. It was the brown stabiliser. Okay. It's another name for modium too. <laughs> um, you probably don't know what that is, no. both of you, but it's all ahead of you. One day. <laughs> Eliza. The only other character in the film with The Shining is Halloran, who knows without asking that Danny's nickname is what? He's Doc. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Do you know why his parents call him Doc? Yeah, because of Bugs Bunny. Bugs like, Bunny, yeah. that's right. What's up, Doc? The creepy Grady twins were played by Louise and Lisa Burns, who turned 11 while on set, receiving from director Stanley Kubrick a birthday gift of which prop? Oh. I know Kubrick had a really weirdly cute relationship with all the kids in the film. I made that sound creepy, but it's not. Um, I don't know what kind of prop he would have given them. Um, I'm going to guess and say uh, uh, the tricycle. Incorrect. He gave them fake blood. Oh. <laughs> In particular, it was called Kensington Gore. 
Uh, <laughs> Sounds like a last-minute gift to me. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, oh, yeah. fake blood. There you go, kids. <laughs> yeah. You can either have that or an axe. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> One all. Anyone's at this point? <laughs> Eliza. According to the documentary Room 237, Stanley Kubrick made The Shining as a confession that he faked the moon landing, alluding to it with what piece of clothing in the film? To a jumper that Danny wears that has the Apollo 11 rocket on it. Correct. <laughs> there he is there with the jumper on. The real reason that he was wearing it was just because I think Kubrick liked it because it looked handmade. Hmm. Eden. All right, Eliza, if you get this right, you are tonight's hard quiz Ooh, champion. Jeez, OK. <laughs> get ready to drink some Milo. <laughs> Milo or tea, who could it be? <laughs> Eliza. On Monday, Danny and his mother, Wendy, sit in the hotel lobby watching a television broadcast of which film? I don't know what it is. I can picture what they're watching, but... Uh, What's it look like? It's a guy and a lady talking to each other and her, like, inviting him into the house. It seems kind of porny, actually, <laughs> but... Oh. <laughs> It's probably some, like, old sitcom or something. Uh, I'm going to guess it's The Waltons. I don't know. Incorrect. OK. It was Summer of 42. <sighs> Summer of 42 was one of Stanley Kubrick's favourite films and one of Brian Adams' lesser-known songs. <laughs> <laughs> if you get this right, you are tonight's Hard Quiz champion, Eliza. Stanley Kubrick lied to the Motion Picture Association of America in order to air the official trailer for The Shining, stating that the red torrent gushing from the hotel elevators was actually what? He told the censors that it was rusty water. Correct! You are tonight's Hard Kids Champion! Adam, you know what this means?